Well, the inquiry into the future of public service broadcasting is underway and we're just outside where the, the meeting has now gone into private. Uh, one of those, and we hope to get as many of the contributors as possible to talk to us, uh, June Turner, obviously NGFM is where you're coming from, but this is about public service broadcasting. I mean, you came along, you probably sport the whole of their model really, because until there was the competition, Manx Radio was the only player in town, they've got adverts and that sort of thing. Now the question is the future of its development and clearly you don't see them being a commercial operator in the future, just using subvention money, would that be right? Would that be something right, summarising or giving it to the BBC? No, what I'd like to see is them give it to the BBC for a number of reasons. Go on then. Well, first of all, the BBC, one of the world's biggest broadcasters, has the resources um, that Manx Radio could only ever dream about. And the fact that BBC Local Radio is undergoing a surge of investment at the moment, and of course, if you look at BBC Local Radio and what it delivers, it's a very, very high quality product to local areas. It would be an absolute win-win for the Manx um, residents and also the content they produce. Okay, but that's what I'm, I did say about coming out of commercialism, which is basically the yes. same thing, isn't it? But beginning to the BBC, there's no more adverts. You will benefit as a commercial radio station, right? Not necessarily, um, because I think you have to look at the way advertising is, is, is divided up. What it will do is it would level the playing field for a start-off because they wouldn't be branching out into all sorts of other things that they're doing, like they're doing social media management, they're doing wiring of buildings, they're doing all sorts of things, not just competing with radio. So the first thing it would do, it would make the, the, the playing field level again. Um, but as you say, this is a focus on public service broadcasting and what the product's going to be. Well, you've said that the Channel Islands, and we've heard this many times before, have a BBC radio in Jersey and Guernsey, and they run a television operation as well. Uh, is that where you see the future of broadcasting here going? Well, I'm a big fan of BBC Local Radio. As I said to the committee, I've, I've had a little uh, foray into BBC Local Radio, doing some contributions to stations in, in England. And I, I really think that if you compare the offering the Isle of Man gets to the likes of the Channel Islands, Jersey and Guernsey, then it's quite different. And obviously the point is, the fact they've never come here is because we had Manx Radio, and whilst we were pouring millions of pounds into that every year, there was never any need for the BBC to come to the Isle of Man. You're an ex-Manx Radio guy. Are we, are we seeing that you're bitter and twisted over the whole thing? I mean, do you want to party with them or you know, get back in, in with them in some form? Well, what this is about is, my, my view is that it should be given to the BBC to run, not this idea of, uh, well, we'll have some of the BBC money, because that's not what BBC money's for. People pay a BBC licence fee for a BBC service. So if there's money to be coming back to the island, then it should be a BBC service it's funding. Um, I don't even agree with even if they come up with the notion of they should get some money back and divide it up between Manx Radio Energy and 3FM. That's not what the BBC licence fee's for. It's for a BBC service. They had a committee, what, four years ago. Do you see anything happening this time? Because certainly last time, uh, I think Mr Berry was saying that he, he felt nothing really came out of it. Well, that's right. Nothing did come out of it. We had another report that went on the shelf with all the others that they've had over the years. Um, however many, I can't remember now. There was the Kreisky report, of course, in, in, in our time at Manx Radio, Paul. But, uh, you know, it depends whether they've got the will. The difference is now, of course, that the government is short of money. So whilst on one, uh, you know, they're, they're putting out that they're going to stop our grannies getting prescriptions and all the other things, and at the same time they're being asked to pour money into Manx Radio. So the decision time now, I think, is more important of what they're going to do with it and how they're going to fund it. My view is they don't need to fund it. We should be getting the BBC to fund it. You didn't do anything on the last committee four years ago, but you are now... Is this because of your being inside the tent, as you were, with the government? Does that release you now that you can now start causing, uh, I was going to say mischief, but you, 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 you're a dog with a bone, and I, I know this personally, that you, you are a broadcaster like through d DNA and everything. Are yeah. you going to be on the, 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 their case? I mean, yeah, freedom of information and that sort absolutely. of thing. Absolutely. Um, I've had a look at the freedom of information at the moment as to what the current deal with the BBC is. I think there's a contribution of about £40,000 at the moment of BBC money uh, for renting part of the building. And they also but, do programming, don't they? Some, uh, uh, I'm not too sure right. about that. But the, the I think the point I'm making is that when they're now reviewing this whole thing about public service broadcasting, they, there's too much, they're wanting too much control, the bank's government, and they're frightened to let go of that control. It works really well in the Ch Channel Islands. It works really well in the nations and regions around the rest of the UK. Why won't it work here? It would be a much better product, better service, better for the staff, and the whole, as I said, the whole ethos of BBC Local Radio is it's local 
content for local people. And radio or take, TV. They're not going to take that away. I mean, you know, in all, all platforms future. Yeah, well, of course, the BBC have their, they already have their setup. So if they were to somehow take it over, they would know, you'd know what they're getting. They have BBC Online, um, dedicated to the local area, um, and they have their radio service. And of course, there's no reason why they, they couldn't uh, look in. I mean, I think uh, Channel Arms has their opt outs. That would probably be um, a step too far in the short term. But of course, once they're in and established, then it's a lot easier for them to then do it. But if we're looking at, at you know, it's one step at a time, I think. I think we have to solve the problem of this, this constant football that Manx Radio is, kicked around every few years, and how we're going to fund it. We don't need to fund it. OK, well, we're going to talk to other people involved in this whole thing. We hope, obviously, Manx Radio will talk after they've given their evidence and... Uh, We'll see what happens, of course. It, as it does feel like a bit deja vu on, on this, but uh, you never know. I'll talk to you again in five years' time. <laughs>